Hey everyone, it's Tara, and today I'm going to be talking about 25 bookish facts about moi and <laughs> me. So let's go down the list here. So this is like a twofer for one. Uh, I am totally fine with eating and drinking near my books, in fact. Uh, my beverages of choice are any, anything that's really good and tasty. Um, whenever I'm up for it, I'll drink coffee, I'll drink, I'm getting into tea recently, like some pomegranate tea, which I got from Trader Joe's, uh, which is fantastic. Hot chocolate, um, juice, ginger ale, <laughs> LaCroix, water, I'll drink all of that at uh, once. I don't care. It's a thing. I'm also okay with eating near books. Mentioned this before, I have books in my bag at all times. I have like the Penguin Edition Classics, the 80th anniversary Penguin Edition. So they're like these little, little 50 pages and huge collection. I keep them kind of collected together by my doorway. So I'll just like pick one out if I finish the other one. Perfect little reads. Some of my favorite childhood reads, I mentioned those before. A babysitter's club. What's interesting though uh, is that I love a lot of movies as a kid that were books and I still haven't read them. Like I loved Harry the Spy and I love Matilda. Those two and are still my two main ladies that I really look up to even as an adult. I just love those movies so much. They were w so well done and they hold up to the test of time and I just need to read them. I have one of them. I need to get the other. I need to get Harriet the Spy and just read it this upcoming year. Gotta put that on my list. I like to annotate my books. For those of you who watched my currently reading video, I showed you my post-its. Uh, I love to keep post-its in my books. It's just like the little flagged ones. I keep all kinds of colors and I'll even write on those to indicate like what is the quote exactly, what is the theme that was really sparking and striking my interest. Uh, but I will annotate, I will write in my books. It's just a nice way to capture that moment in time that I was reading that book. Sure, it could be embarrassing in the future, but um, that's kind of like the way it goes, right? That's like making the book kind of part of your journal or diary of your experience reading it. I organize my bookshelves. I have them set by genre, uh, type of writer. So I have a whole section of my bookshelf devoted to women writers. Uh, I have a whole section de devoted to people of color, people who are diverse and different from me. These bookshelves over here are organized by a subject type. So I have a shelf devoted to all of my social work textbooks, a shelf devoted to all my research methods and stats, yeah, and different writing books. Now that I'm accumulating a lot related to editing, I'm just created a shelf for that. You can kind of see it's one. It's it doesn't have that much right now, but it's it's growing fast. Um, I also have a section devoted to uh, celebrity autobiographies or biographies. I love reading those, especially like Amy Poehler's and Tina Fey's. Uh, Regis Philbin is on that list for sure. Also, I have it uh, organized by grouping of authors. So like authors that were in Paris during the 1920s. Those guys are all together, guys and gals, because. Gertrude Stein, y'all, and many others, and uh, a group of writers from the late 1800s, early 1800s. Jane Austen, of course, has her own section. Uh, books that are more contemporary reads, books I read this year. I have, I have like a smaller bookcase just for books I haven't read yet. Um, so as I work my way through those, then I can move them to a more permanent location. Uh, so that's kind of like the lowdown of my bookshelves. Maybe someday I'll share those with you all if you're interested in seeing that. They're spread all over my apartment because that's such a lovely thing to see. It makes me happy. I'm on track to read 50 books this year. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. I said 50, 50 books as my goal this year on Goodreads and I'm four away from the end. So if I finish those books I'm currently reading, then I will be there. I will reach my 50 books. Yes. I may do that same goal next year. Maybe not because I think I want to try a bunch of different reads next year. Like I want to read Middlemarch by George Eliot. And I know that's a huge tome of a book, uh, which is fantastic. I love long books. That's another bookish fact about me. I love getting through a big book. 
it's just so re totally fine with reading books with a movie or music on in the background as long as I'm familiar with them like if it's a movie that I've watched a million times like Clueless but like yeah a movie I know really well um, and I'm totally fine with playing it on the background or the Moana soundtrack that's a good one to listen to in the background just so inspiring when you're reading so I like to read multiple books multiple books at one time and even across categories I purposely read a nonfiction book with a fiction book in terms of my day-to-day -day reading and it's just ni a nice way to um, still liven up what I'm reading but also feel like it's educational in some way I just have a lot of reading in general so if I'm reading a non-academic book or a one that's just a pleasure read then I, f I feel bad I feel kind of shameful about that because as a grad student, you, you gotta be reading all of the time. I am a very emotional reader when I'm in the midst of it. I will cry, I will laugh out loud. It gets, yeah, I get into it. I am a bit of an intense reader. Um, I won't do it in public, but sometimes if the book catches me off guard, that's a thing. I believe that using a book is loving a book. So read your books, do what is best for you. I do not judge people based on how they read their books. I just don't want to practice judgment over how someone reads a book. If you're reading a book, that's fantastic. I want to celebrate that. There are not enough people reading books out there. <laughs> I try to read 100 pages a day, but I'll like break that down between 50 in a nonfiction and 50 in a fictional read. When I read Harry Potter, I read it as a buddy read with my dad. We actually like shared the book itself. I would read the book during the day and then he would read in the evening and then we would discuss in that morning what were all the fun things that happened. It would be a little bit competitive so I don't think we were often like on the same page but we would have to be like make sure that we're not spoiling what the other person had not read yet. So that leads me to my next fact is that shared reading experiences are the best. So if any of you want to do like a collab read on anything, I would be totally up for it. One of my major dreams growing up was to own a bookstore. And sometimes I, that still creeps up in my head of like, Tara, maybe you can open a bookstore. And of course, a Ravenclaw. I could be like a Raven Puff or a Huffleclaw. These days I'm becoming even more of a Hufflepuff. I'm looking for a series to get into. I haven't been re doing a lot of series reads, maybe in the past few years. I mean, I did read one, My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante, and oh my gosh, that was such a good book. And there are three other ones that follow it. It's part of the Neapolitan novels, um, and they're amazing. Well, I just read the first one, but I can't read, can't wait to read the rest of them. Jane Austen is like my go-to. I read her across seasons, mainly like in the spring for some reason. I think that's when I'm feeling extra cold and Britishy. And I feel like the books match the scenery here. So my favorite Austen guy will have to be Henry Tilney from Northanger Abbey. I know that that raises a lot of discussion. I know, I'm sorry, Darcy is not my favorite. He's not. Uh, Henry Tilney is. He's so funny, so witty and clever and sensitive and thoughtful. He's just all of the things. So I'm also getting into bookmarks these days. Yes! I used to just lose all my bookmarks all of the time. So I would have to use these flagged post-its. So like the really durable ones that will just like stick on a page and we'll leave it. I think I have one here. So like these guys. This is really durable. I've since moved on to bookmarks, especially just paper ones that come with the books. I've just used them and those have been great too. So we'll see where my bookmark journey will go to next. I often read books by the season. So uh, I think a lot of people do that too. Like they'll usually read like more thriller and suspense in the fall. I try to stay away from that in particular because I am like, I am a scaredy cat. I'll read like a lot of classics in the spring, early summer, Victorian novels, early fall, which kind of is nice. It falls in nicely with Victober. I'm well known in my family to give out books for every holiday and birthday, every gift giving event. Over the years, I've had to get very creative with the types of boxes that I'll give books in. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like disregarding that person's like wish list. This book is linked with like whatever they're interested in. That is all of my list there. 
that, that's all of them. All 25. I did it. Let me know if we have any commonalities. And talk to you later. Bye.